Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Today we're in John chapter 6, verse 67. Get your Bible, open it up to John chapter 6. We'll begin in just a minute. You can study all of God's Word with me, just like we're going to do today, verse by verse, using my audio Bible messages. Do it at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, which is found at the thebibleversebyverse.com. Don't go there if you're looking for something other than the Word of God because you won't find it. All you will find there is God's Word taught by me going back 38 years, four complete series going through every verse of the Bible, going on five, all archived at the thebibleversebyverse.com. All you need is is your Bible a hunger for God's Word? And then choose, click, and listen. Again, that is at the Bible, verse by verse, dot com. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> okay. John 6, 7, 6, verse 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Jesus just finished preaching a sermon in a synagogue. There's, there were thousands of people who heard that sermon. Every one of them walked away. The twelve are the only ones remaining with Jesus. So Jesus said, are you going to walk away too? Jesus, of course, knew that they would walk away, that the crowd would walk away. But he spoke the truth anyway, because the truth is that important. We can't worry about who will like us, who will not like us, if we live for Jesus. I cannot worry and I don't worry. I don't even think about it. It doesn't even enter my mind who will like me, who will not like me, who will listen or watch me, who will not. If I speak the truth, I speak the truth of God's word. I got somebody much higher to be accountable for as a teacher of God's word, and that's Almighty God himself. So believe me, I couldn't care less who doesn't like me. The Bible says that we will be judged with a stricter judgment if we teach God's word, and I take that very seriously. So I'm with Jesus all the way. He preached the truth. He taught the truth, even though people did not like it, and he lost a huge crowd. You going to go too, Jesus said? 68, then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. It is good to have a Peter if you're proclaiming God's word. You're not going to have a crowd. You're not going to be Mr. Popular. You won't be invited to the White House, believe me, not if you're proclaiming the pure word of God. You're not going to be invited to the White House or any place else. Especially not in this administration. But you won't be popular. That's why it's good to have a Peter who says, no, we want the truth. Peter says, where will we go? You're the only one who has the words of eternal life. What are we supposed to do? Walk away and die and go to hell? He wanted the truth. Whether it made him comfortable or not. And he claims to be a smoke spokesperson for the other 11 disciples. 69. And we believe and are sure that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter did think that he was speaking on behalf of the other 12, or all 12, of the remaining disciples. He says, we know that you're the Holy One of God. 
That's right. That's why we're not going to leave you. Where would we go? What are you going to do? You don't like the Word of God. It makes you feel uncomfortable. Well, the only reason the Word of God would make you feel uncomfortable is if there's sin in your life. So what's your alternative? Close the book and live in sin and then die and go to hell? I'm not, not much of, a, of an alternative. I'm with Peter all the way because he's with Jesus all the way. Where are we going? There's no plan B. It's Jesus or nothing. There's no plan B. There's no other words of eternal life other than the Lord Jesus Christ is the only Savior. That's it. Take it or leave it. Most people leave it. But Peter thinks he's speaking for all 12 of them, but Jesus knew better. Look at 70. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you 12, and one of you is a devil. So I guess Peter should not have been so confident that he was speaking on behalf of the 12 because he wasn't. There was one in that group who looked good. But he was a devil. Judas put on a good show. He had everybody fooled, but he is a devil. And he does the devil's work. Even before he betrayed Jesus, he still did the devil's work. And he was used by Jesus, but he still did the devil's work. He did not belong to Jesus Christ. He used to lift money out of the treasury. That was before he betrayed Christ. Jesus knew. Judas wasn't fooling anybody. And notice 71, he spoke of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that would betray him being one of the 12. He definitely is of the devil, or is a devil. He's going to sell Jesus out. When he gets the opportunity to make a few bucks out of the deal, that's exactly what he was going to do. So Jesus knew what Judas was going to do long before he did it. Judas has a free will. He can do what he wants to do. Everybody has a free will. Chapter 7, after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Judea because the Jews sought to kill him. Jesus wasn't afraid of the Jewish religious rulers down in the Jerusalem area. That's not why he stayed away. He stayed away because it wasn't time for the conflict that will inevitably come with them and lead to his crucifixion. It just wasn't time. Jesus wasn't on their timetable. Jesus is on the Father's timetable. Now, it may have looked like Jesus was afraid, and that's why he stayed away from Judea. You can't help what people think. You really can't. And don't pay attention to what people say if they misrepresent you and your walk with the Lord or, or your Christian lifestyle or your belief in the Bible, or any of those things. You can't help what people think or what they say, and it really doesn't matter. We need to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ, on Almighty God, and pleasing Him. That's the attitude that you have to have if you're going to be a teacher and preacher of God's Word. I know that for sure. I can't afford to even think about what people might think of me. I don't even let my mind go there. I never have to my recollection. And we as Christians can't afford to go there. Just live for Jesus and focus on what he wants us to do. And if people misrepresent you or lie about you or say things about you, big deal. You're pleasing God. That's the important thing. Two, now the feast, the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. And that was one of the three major religious feasts that occurred every year <clears throat> that Jewish men were required by God's law to attend. So everybody, every man, no matter where you lived in Israel, had to drop what they were doing 
and go down to Jerusalem and attend this feast. The women could come, but it was mandatory for the men. Because men are supposed to be the spiritual leaders in the home. Adam was supposed to be the spiritual leader. That's why God gave him the prohibition. That's why God gave him the truth. And he was supposed to pass it on to Eve. Evidently, he did, and she didn't listen. But men are supposed to be the spiritual leaders in the home. That's not a job that is to be advocated over to the wife, but it is oftentimes. Three, his brothers therefore said unto him, Depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you do. His half-brothers, Jesus' half-brothers, are saying, look, if you want to be popular, go down to Judea right now. That's where everybody is. Do your miracles down there so everybody can see it. Four, for there is no man that does anything in secret when he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For neither did his brothers believe in him. They were sleazy at this point. Later on, after the... uh, resurrection of Christ. At least James believed in him. I can't remember if the other ones did or not, but we know that James did. His brother, half-brother James believed in him and actually became the leader in the Jerusalem church after the day of Pentecost. But right here, they you talk about misrepresenting Jesus. His own half-brothers are doing it. Well, if you want to be Mr. Popular, go down there right now. Nobody does things in secret if they want to be known openly. Come on, go down. Here's your big chance, big brother. As if he is doing this stuff to become famous. For neither did his brothers believe in him. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. You do whatever you want because you're not under the lordship of God. Your time is always right. You have a lot of freedom when you rebel against God. You can do anything that you want. You're your own boss. But people who are saved or the son of God, they're on a timetable. They strictly follow Almighty God and his word. Jesus always followed the Father's word and the Father's leading. We can't do anything that we want any time that we want. If we want to honor God, we got to do things his way at his time, the best that we can, and let the world go do whatever they want to do, and they do. Jesus continues talking to his half-brothers in verse 7. The world cannot hate you, but me it hates, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. The world can't hate you. Why? Because they were lost and on their way to hell right now. They're part of the world. They're part of the world. The world can't hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it that its works are evil. Jesus called sin, sin. That's why he lost thousands of followers in the previous sermon. Because he called sin, sin. You can bet Judas wasn't happy with seeing all those guys walk away and all those people because he was in it for the money. He was dipping his hand into that treasury. The more followers, the more money. So he wasn't happy with that. The brothers were ridiculing their brother, half-brother Jesus. Jesus says, the world doesn't hate me or doesn't hate you. And of course not because they go with the flow, the ungodly foal. They don't worry about sticking to the word of God. That's why, that is why a preacher or a Christian will never be popular with the world if they're living the word of God and speaking the truth of God's word. It's just impossible. Jesus said, I speak the truth. I testify that the world's deeds are evil. And if And if Jesus doesn't do it, and you and I don't do it, who else is going to do it? And if it doesn't get done, then how are lost souls ever going to get saved? They won't, because they'll never feel guilt, because there's too many gutless people, too many gutless preachers who don't call sin, sin, and preach against it. That's why sinners feel perfectly at home in modern evangelical churches. 
They feel perfectly at home. Not a problem. Never feel guilt. Why would they? The preachers are as much of the world as the world can be. It's like Jesus said, the world doesn't hate you, but it hates me because I testify of it that its deeds are evil. I speak the truth of God's word. And then Jesus says this in verse 8, Go ye up unto this feast. I cannot go up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet fully come. It wasn't time. The father didn't say go up to the feast, so he didn't go. But they could go anytime they want to. So Jesus says, why don't you just go up there? You don't have to hang out with me. His brothers didn't like him any more than anybody else in the world liked him. So he said, go. I'm not going. I'm going to stick to the word of God. I'm going to stick to my father's will. You go ahead and do whatever you want to do. And that's exactly how I feel. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. I'm going to confess when I fail. And if people like it, they like it. If they don't like it, so be it. I'm not going to stand before them on Judgment Day. I haven't been called to please them. And neither have you. So let's follow our Lord's example. And do what the Father wants us to do. Stick to the written word of God. Study all of God's word with me so that you know what the Father's will is, so that you can do the Father's will. And it's so important to study the whole counsel of God. That's why I've been teaching it from Genesis through Revelation now for 38 years. Can't possibly do what the Father wants you to do unless you study the word of God. And Jesus said that we will be judged by every word of God. It is only right for me to teach the whole counsel of God since that's the basis for our judgment. So study with me from Genesis through Revelation at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you'd like to be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse, you can be by praying for me and God's Word. That makes you an immediate part of that of this ministry. Do it right now while you're thinking about it. Do it again later when you think about it again. Write a note. Put it on your refrigerator door. Pray for Mike. Appreciate it. Also, when you take a break from studying with me at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the donate button, prayerfully give as the Lord may lead, because that also makes you a part of this ministry. Until next time, so long, everyone.